Imagine you're given a $3 mug. You are using the mug once for your cup of tea and then someone offers to buy it off you. How much would you ask for this $3 mug? This is a real world study with a surprising finding. The owners know the mug is worth just $3 but on average most demanded $7 to part company with it. This is the endowment effect. The moment we feel ownership over something we value that item more than we would before. It's a great experiment, but could it be used to tackle a nationwide behavioural challenge? Could it be used to solve a problem like this? The overwhelming majority of uh, cervical cancer, so over 95% of cervical cancer, is caused by HPV infection. That's Julia. She works at the Behavioural Insights team. Hi Phil, my name is Julia Tagliaferri. I am the Head of Evaluation. I actually work across BIT and, uh, and NASA. She's joined by her co-worker, Niall. My name is Niall Daly and I am a quantitative research advisor. Niall and Julia wanted to use the endowment effect to encourage young girls in Georgia to get vaccinated. Cervical cancer is the third leading cause of female cancer deaths in Georgia. HPV vaccines can prevent cervical cancer, but young Georgian girls weren't being vaccinated. Coverage uh, for this vaccine is very low in Georgia. It's a free vaccination and nevertheless, uh, especially after After the pandemic, uh, vaccination uh, rates uh, plummeted to like about uh, 14%. That's like a decrease of more than 60%. Yet Niall and Julia were confident that they could help. In general, we know that behavioural science can help us to address a lot of those barriers. And so we've seen that nudges that offer incentives to parents and healthcare workers can be effective. Nudges that use trusted messengers to deliver information can be very effective. But Niall and Julia wanted to test a different approach. In particular, framing a vaccine as being reserved for someone or reserved for a person in your care uh, has been found to be particularly effective in high income countries. Niall's referring to this 2021 study. They sent 19 different text messages to thousands of people, encouraging them to get the flu vaccination. One text shared a joke about the flu. Another said the flu shot makes you more healthy. A different text said getting the vaccine helps protect your loved ones. However, the most effective message simply said the vaccine was reserved for you. That message increased vaccination rates by 4.6 percentage points. Why? because it triggered the endowment effect. It made readers feel a sense of ownership over their vaccination and a reluctance to miss out on their dose. And what's great about this finding is it's a very cheap intervention. Each individual SMS costs less than one US cent to send. So in September 2022, Niall and Julia and their team created four messages as part of their experiment. In short, there was a short SMS with no additional information that just and notified the caregiver that their daughter was due for a free HPV vaccine, which will protect against cervical cancer. Um, There was a second one which builds on this, which had the same information and then also linked to the National Centre for Disease Control's website. So this incorporated a little bit more of a a messenger effect as well, because it referenced the NCDC. There was a, a third version, which we call the reserved for her version in the paper that used a framing of the vaccine the vaccine was reserved at the specific clinic and that they should the caregiver should contact uh, the clinic to arrange an appointment and then the fourth version of the intervention was the same sms as the original one not with the framing of the vaccine being reserved for her but with some safety information so it mentioned that the vaccine had been safely administered to more than 100 million girls worldwide the results from all four of these texts would be compared to the control Uh, the control group did not receive any SMS reminder. And in late 2022, the texts were sent. The National Centre for Disease Control in the country essentially sent out all of the SMS reminders to the four treatment groups at the same time. Broadly speaking, we tracked two things. Tracked the dosage, so whether each SMS that was sent was actually delivered to the phone number. Overall, we had 99.5% delivery, which is great. Then we also tracked the outcome, which was each girl's uh, vaccination status for HPV at the end of the trial period. So did one of the texts perform better? Did one make girls more likely to get the vaccine? So the third version of the SMS reminder, which I mentioned being the reserve for her, turned out to be uh, have a higher rate of vaccination. So the control group had a vaccination rate of 2.4% after the trial. Um, And then the four treatment groups had ranges between 3.9 and 4.7%. And the highest of these was the reserve for her framing. So version three of our SMS reminder, which had 4.7%. We find that this reserve for her framing had approximately 65% greater odds in terms of a girl receiving the vaccine relative to the control group. 
This text made Georgian girls 65% more likely to get vaccinated. But why? Before they knew about the vaccine being reserved for their daughter or that their daughter was due to the vaccine, they didn't particularly value it. They didn't, it had no importance to them. They didn't feel possession of it. But once we imbue that sense of possession or reservation for you or a family member, our brains value things more. I thought this was a very impressive result, but I wondered if I could use this same principle to increase my sales. Can I use this principle on my podcast listeners? Well, I ran a test to find out. I sell an online course. I haven't promoted it in years. So I downloaded a list of my last 1,000 email subscribers and I split them into two groups. Both groups were sent an email with a 50% discount to my course. However, some were sent the reserved for you framing. The control group got a standard email with a subject line that said, a thank you, 50% off. The reserved for you group received almost the same message, but the subject line said 50% off, reserved for you. The coupon code was reserved for me. And instead of saying here's 50% off, I wrote, I've reserved you a 50% discount. Did the reserved for you framing perform better? Well, no. The reserved version received a slightly lower open rate of 0.1%. That's fine. That's not a big significant difference. However, the click rate was 14% lower. And what's worse, the reserved framing led to zero sales, while the control version generated two sales. Now, I'll be the first to admit that this isn't a very reliable test. It's not very big. It's just with 1,000 subscribers and only two sales in total. But still, I was surprised. How did I get this so wrong? Well, listening back to the conversation with Niall and Julia, I think I discovered my mistake. If you think of kind of the reserved for you message, like if if we make people believe that something is specifically meant for them and might be not available to others or to themselves later on, then they are more likely to act quickly to secure it. My emails missed all three of these components. Readers had no reason to think the discount was just for them. They were aware that it was available to others. After all, the email wasn't personalised at all. And there was no time limit on using it. I should have personalised the emails, made it clear why I'd reserved the coupon code for them and limited the amount of time they could use it for. That probably would have beaten my control. But then again, maybe this reserved for you framing works beautifully for vaccines, but fails miserably for coupon codes. My test didn't work, but that's not a problem. Behavioural science isn't a law book that's guaranteed to work. The world is too chaotic for that to be the case. Instead, behavioural science provides guidance that has been proved to work elsewhere, so might work for you. Applying behavioural science isn't a foolproof way to get results. It simply helps you take an informed action, which occasionally won't work the way you expect.